Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have a device that I'm not really completely sure what it is. Um, not this one, obviously I know what that guy is. This guy right here, believe it or not, it was over on the storage shelf and it was tipped over and since it was tipped over, there's oil spewing everywhere. And I was like, is that what I really think it is? It has the ability to move oil it's not hydraulic because it's got a compressed or compression capable hose coming out of it with a quick connect and I can't exactly power it on because right here's the power cord. So I figured let's go ahead and take the opportunity. Let's go ahead and open it up if there's oil inside it and it's got a hose like this. That means it's either a vacuum pump or it's an air compressor. Not really sure which type. Some are like the diaphragm style, which you can see over here, this guy. That's a uh, diaphragm style um, pump. It's got vacuum and it's got pressure. So depending on which reed valve you are connecting your hose to. But this guy, it's only got one hose coming out of it. And I have never seen this device before, ever. But it was on the shelf and the oil was leaking out. And since the oil was leaking out, it obviously has to be serviced before you can connect power because somebody is going to turn this guy on without any oil inside and depending on the type of vacuum pump or compressor um you could completely destroy it so anyway uh it appears to be 120 volt again i don't know i can't really tell it's got european style wiring so that is the brown blue and the green it could be natively 220 volt, although I kind of doubt it given, given the fact that it's here in America. I've never opened this up. So it's got a shield on the front. Very cool. All right, so it is a vacuum pump. And the reason I can tell that is because right up here we have a muffler. And this guy is a serviceable part. Let's see. Is this the style that just pulls off? Yeah. I want to get this guy out. There we go. There we go. Okay, so it's got a muffler, and the muffler is completely uh, saturated in oil. That's a huge no-go because, um, as you guys know, depending on the type of compressor, oil is not compressible. And since it's not compressible, if this was a piston-style pump and the cylinder was full of oil, it would be deadlocked possibly to the point where it's going to be a failure so um by the looks of this guy right here i would almost venture to say it's a rotary vein i don't know let's go ahead and open it up let's continue taking this guy apart because if there's oil in the reservoir right here now i'm really curious this this is a uh yulvac Sinku kinku <laughs> g10d um not really sure it says pumping speed 10 12 whatever um very cool very cool so it's it's a pump all right it's air pump air pumps are also vacuums let's see i'm gonna go ahead and put my fasteners over here no matter what it's obviously a vintage item and I, I like to maintain vintage things just because, generally speaking, they're probably built better than a lot of uh, modern day equivalents. So right here is an oilless um, diaphragm pump. This one here is a maybe a rotary vane uh, vacuum, which means that this is a much higher quality. It can draw a higher vacuum, which maybe is why it's on the, sh the shelf over there is because for most of the stuff that we do, like rebuilding uh, vacuum regulators, we just use a little um, vacuum pump. We don't need something like this. This is a little intense. Okay, let's see. I have a solenoid. I've got a start run capacitor up here. Here, let me turn it sideways so y'all can see. So here's my uh, start run capacitor. Right here's my solenoid and I don't know what's the triggering mechanism for this guy. There has to be a triggering mechanism because, you know, it's going to be what pressure activated or externally activated. I don't know. So you can see why I wanted to get in there and open it up. 
There's a lot of things where hydraulic oil will uh, deteriorate. A lot of rubber seals cannot handle hydraulic oil. So you want to clean that stuff up as best you can. That's what we got here. So there's a bunch of notices on this guy. It's got a, a Panasonic motor. Very cool. So it's a 115 to 120 volt motor. So it is a 120 volt uh, unit. Um, not very powerful, but again, it doesn't need to be. There's a lot of mechanical advantage when it comes to vacuum. And let's see. Okay, so that's interesting. So here's my uh, input since it's vacuum. So that here's my input hose. And it's also teed into this guy right here. So I wonder if this pump works too hard if it triggers the solenoid and opens up the solenoid and vents vacuum so that you don't blow it up. I don't know. Very curious about that. It's got active cooling right here on the back to draw the air in and then uh, the rotor on the motor. It's also got its own induction fan over here. Oh, uh, let's see. I have a little indicator right here. It indicates uh, the fluid. Oh, very cool. A very large thumb screw for, for draining. I should probably do that first, huh? Okay. So I'm putting it up on its own shroud so I can drain the oil. And that should work. A peach. These type of vacuum pumps, you're going to find them in freeze dryers. You could find this type of vacuum pump in things like plasma um, sterilizers because it's going to draw the chamber down to an ultra low vacuum. Um, this type of vacuum pump you're going to see in uh, HVAC applications because you have to draw the system down uh, to a pretty low vacuum to get rid of any humidity that's and air that's located in your um, in your coils. So um, yeah, come on, strain out. There's a lot of oil that's already uh, all over my countertop over there. So I don't suspect there should be too much in there. Um, its color is not bad. You know, it should be kind of like a bright yellow, so it could be better. I bet you this guy has never been properly serviced because it's, it's a, probably a low use vacuum. So here we go. All right, all right, there we go. This guy is actually kind of heavy <laughs> and very slippery. All right, so there we go, we got them out. Now I'm going to pull the perimeter screws off right here so we can access the rotary vein. I believe it's a rotary vein. And uh, let's get inside and let's see what we got going on. Okay, so here we are. I've got all the fasteners out except for that one up there and this one down here, which are very loose. And let's see if I can do this properly to show you guys how I'm gonna break it, break it loose. <laughs> Right. Here we go. It's, it's not a perfect situation. That's clear. All right. So I anticipate that the oil is going to go down, I'm propping it up so that it's coming down at an angle. I think I've done everything right. Okay. Flat blade screwdriver. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work some of the corners just to test it, see how bad it is. Oh, it's tight. It's definitely tight. go all right so I broke the seal and it is being retained by the top and bottom fastener so that's why it didn't shoot off that's perfect okay so now let's go ahead and take those last two fasteners out bottom one first there's some oil coming out Come on. and the top one up here Oh yeah, definitely a little bit of oil left in it. Okay. So what's possible is if this, oh yeah, nice and easy, nice and easy. There we go. What? Okay. What is this? 
I got two reeds right here and right here. And that means that the rotary is in here. Oh, that's wild. So this is a splash guard so that the, um, the exhaust or yeah, the exhaust, this guy right here, this splash guard keeps the oil from popping up into that top port and obviously tipping it over didn't help that case out. But so right here, I've got four fasteners that are holding basically the pump head together. Let me get some, oh yeah, some paper towel, hydraulic oil, some nasty stuff, man. So this, I do believe, is a rotary vane. Just a really, really efficient one. Wow. Okay. There we go. Do you know how hard it is to grip a screwdriver when you uh, have oily hands? Now, these are Weha screwdrivers. They do a pretty good job, but holy cow. That takes some grip strength. All right, here we go. And the last fastener. Little guy right here. What? Did you guys see that? This guy is so efficiently machined that this plate is kind of stuck on just from the uh, fluid pressure, uh, you know, between two flat surfaces. Very cool. All right. So this is a, well, it's a single stage rotary vane, but it's a dual head. All right. So let me turn this guy so you guys can see it. No, no, no. <laughs> Almost lost my hydraulic oil. That would have been a mess. Okay. So rotary vane pumps are this guy right here. You can see that there are two spring-loaded vanes. So there's one, there's two, and there is an ellipse. I can't even talk this morning. So there's going to be an ellipse in here, and it's going to have compression and exhaust and up here at the top which you can barely see let's see if i can get you guys in closer so right here at the top there's a couple reed valves so what it is is they're sucking in air and that it's sealing it off so that's what's creating your vacuum is those those reed valves and the fact that this pump it can draw such a high vacuum because the chamber is small the smaller the chamber, the smaller the motor can be that spins it. It just has to revolve more times to uh, capture a larger quantity of air. So I have no idea what the ripums are on this guy, the RPM 60 hertz. I'd be really curious how fast this guy's spinning. Um, and all it's doing is it's rotating these guys around. Let's see if I can do it. So you can see they're spring-loaded um, wipers and they wipe the chamber, and that is what creates basically the sealed chamber. So it it sucks it in, and then it compresses it, just like that, as it rotates. So right here you got compression, right here you have suction on this side. Very cool. All right, well, all the surfaces in this guy are beautiful. There's no debris inside the pump head. So now I feel completely safe on going ahead, let's seal it back up. I'm gonna fill the reservoir back with hydraulic pump oil or vacuum pump oil. And then uh, I can go ahead and terminate the power cord and I have a functioning, um, this gotta be a high suction or uh, ultra low suction uh, vacuum pump. Probably ultra low, not very high volume because there's one pump head here, there's another pump head right here. There's two of them. See it? One, two. And because there's two and they're tiny, they can probably draw a lot of suction, but at the same time, not very much of volume. Anyway, there you guys go. 
that's inside um, a motor. I had no clue what was inside this thing. Now I know, it's safe, I can finish it up, put it back in service. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. I want you all to have a very Merry Christmas. I'm just here cleaning up the shop a little bit, obviously making a little bit of a mess. I'm gonna clean up, I'm gonna go home, and I'm gonna enjoy Christmas with my family as well. Y'all have a good time.